Hi there. In the last video, we talked about HTTP status codes and how to use them in Rails. And in this video, I wanted to talk about how this uh, part of the controller works. And this part of the controller works using Rails validations. So when uh, book.save is called, uh, all of the Rails validations on the book model uh, get get called essentially, and if they all return successfully, then this evaluates to true, and therefore we run the we return the success response. If any of those validations fail, this will return false, and we run the uh, or sorry, we return the error case. The other thing we do here is in the JSON body, we return book.errors. And so after um, a Rails model has save called on it, you can then call errors on it and that will return any of the, uh, all of the validations that have failed essentially and it, they're returned as a hash. So in this case, um, we're just returning all of those, um, converting them to JSON and returning them to the client. Currently, our model is empty. If I open the book model, we just have the default uh, Rails um, scaffold here. We haven't added any validations. So, this part of the of the um, code is never going to get called. In order to test that, we need to actually add some validations. If you remember our schema, we have two fields on book, the title and the author. So let's add some validations around those. I'll open the book model again. And we can say validates author and validates title. Is that right? Yep, author and title. So this is the, the Rails validates method. And the way it works is you, you say validates and you pass in a symbol of the field name that you want to validate. And then afterwards you can give it uh, as a second param, a validation. So to, I think a good validation to use here would be um, the length of the string. So let's try to prevent publishers from just using their initials or using an abbreviated title. Let's say that the field needs to be greater than three characters. The other, the other thing I'll do is say that these fields need to be present. So for presence, I can say um, presence true. And then I can say length spell that wrong, length, uh, and you can do a minimum or a maximum. So minimum uh, three. And I'll just apply the same uh, validation to each, each field at the moment. So assuming I haven't made any typos, if we make a curl request to this uh, controller action and we provide a author and title, which is less than three characters, this validation will fail and will return a 422 with the, the errors. So it should say something like um, author field uh, validation failed minimum three characters. 
So if I pop open the console, I can write a curl request for this. So uh, curl, oh, and uh, by the way, I already have the uh, Rails server running. So I can do curl, provide the um, content type uh, JSON in the, in the header. So content type application JSON. And then I'll add the request type because this is a post. Then I can specify some data. So I will specify the author and we want to give it a, a shorter name so that it fails this validation. So I'm going to do the author's initials as just JK. And I'm also going to make the name uh, too short as well. So uh, this title um, should be, um, I'll just say HP, so short for Harry Potter. And then I need to just specify the URL that we're, we're hitting, so localhost 3000. And then I'll add the dash V so that we can uh, so dash V is for verbose, just to see what's going on. And okay, let's see what happens. So, looks like we got an error. Um, ah, so the first thing I did wrong was, um, I just called the, the uh, root domain, but I need to specify the books controller or the books root. And looks like we got another error. Um, ah, unrecognized status code, unprocessable entity. So it looks like we're actually hitting uh, this part of the code. Um, but I think I potentially spelt this wrong. Um, let's do a quick, oh yeah. Uh, I added a double C. So let's try this again. There we go. So we've got a 422. So we've got an, un an unprocessable entity status code. And you can see in the body here, we have the validation errors. So this is what book.errors is generating. We have the author field and it says is too short. And then we have the title and the validation error is too short. And, and uh, by the way, this book.save, because, because of the validation error, it will fail. So this record has not been saved to the database. So this is really useful because we're um, preventing a, uh, a client API call from creating a book and then we're returning the reasons why back to them. So you can imagine if you were trying to integrate with this API, you can say like, okay, um, these are the things that I need to fix so that I can successfully um, create a book in, in this API. So now what I'll show you is, um, I'll make one of the fields correct. So, um, or I'll make one of the fields pass the validation. So um, I'll give it the full title, Harry Potter one. <laughs> and let's run that again. So now you can see we only get the one validation. So the author is too short. And finally, I will give it the full author name. Um, JK Rowling. And there we go. So now we get a 201 
So now this build.save has returned true because all of the all of the validations were satisfied. So now the book does get created and we return the uh, 201 status code and we also return the the book object. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that kind of explained how Rails validations work. And there are a huge number of validations that you can use if you look up uh, Rails validations. You'll see, um, you'll be able to find the list of um, all the different validations you can use. There's stuff for presence, um, uniqueness, absence, inclusions, you can use arrays um, to check whether something is in an, in an array. Um, so yeah, um, have a look through and um, good luck creating your own validations. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.